That right hand in position, then if I pivot the chest and move the body, now we can see that the hands are in front of the chest. Then as we move back down, they're gonna get into a much better position. All right, dude, so let's look at the hinging of the wrists as we take the golf club back. And then the effect of that later on on the swing of if you don't get that component in check early on, how that can negatively influence your ability to strike the golf ball, right? So we were just talking about before about how important it is to create some sort of hinging motion of yep. the wrists, right? And you were saying that you've got a great drill that you use with a lot of players, which involves separating the hands to try and get a bit of a split grip drill. But it was, it was interesting, you're talking about the feeling of kind of pushing down with the left hand. And I feel like that's something that as coaches we know happens organically as we start to pivot our body and move the club into position. Yep. But then in the same sense, a lot of amateurs, what do they do? They just tend to pull this thing straight off the ball, don't they? So what I want you to do is kind of run me through the drill that you would go with them, with this split grip drill, to uh, let's say encourage that feeling that you're looking for. So if I set up to the ball here, yeah. and let's assume I'm a player who tends to pull this handle back into this position here, don't really have any hinge, there's no set of the arms, what would you tell me to do? So we, we do a drill where we go split hands, so just separate the hands, put the right one a little bit lower on the club. So we, we create like maybe an inch gap between the hands there. Okay. So take your setup for me. Uh -huh. And then the sensation, like we just said, it's almost like the, the left would be pushing down as the right would be hinging up. And mm. because you separated the hands, you get a better sensation of what the left's doing and what the right is. So obviously butt end of the grip, um, you know, versus, versus end of the grip, mm. you'll get the sensation of what that is doing on the way back. Yeah. And again, a lot of people who struggle to to actually load the club, yeah. A lot, you know, you see it all the time. Yeah, probably yeah. really poor hold, yep. um, palmy grip, weak grip, and yep. then obviously they, they can't get the hinge on it. So obviously that might be something which needs to be addressed first before people can do this. But mega drill again, you get the sensation of feeling bottom of the grip versus top, so we get the hinge in motion yep. on the way back, and then we can load it up to the top. And again, you know. A lot of people obviously get that sitting and folding up to the top. Yeah. So that really gets some decent load through the club shaft. Um, and again, we create leverage. And a lot of people who don't create leverage, what do they end up doing? You get a compensation where it'd be, you know, arms start compensating, you know, to get some, some travel of that club because they'll hit it nowhere. Yeah. So I think a very interesting point to note here is that when a lot of players are working on this swing, they tend to focus too much on later uh, stages. So let's say that they see a professional golfer like yourself, they get down into this position, they go, oh my God, that looks amazing. His hands are front and in front of his trail leg. Yep. Uh, his right arm is kind of bent and structured in such a way. And the golf club is hinged, creating some sort of like, let's say this angle here. Yeah. Now that there translated at the moment of impact is gonna create a very strong and functional impact position to get the job done. We see a lot of amateur golfers, and they'll be in this position here, right? So then you'll see a lot of players go, okay, well, maybe if I just do my same backswing and then I just drag that thing down, I can get in position. <laughs> Time and place, 0.25 of a second coming down, good luck. No chance. No chance. So <laughs> this uh, really highlights the importance and the domino effect of doing uh, elements or working on pieces of your golf swing early on to then achieve an outcome yeah, that we see. Isn't it? Yeah, exactly. So treating the cause, not the effect. So when we're setting up to the ball, if you're a player and you tend to get the reference that as you swing back here, we see this forming too much of a straight line structure. So the yes. lead arm and the club yep. shaft is in this position here. We generally see the right arm is literally doing nothing, right? Okay, because it is not in a position where it's creating any, what we'd say like pressure or width creating yep. that arm structure. Yep. So this split grip drill is awesome for from the address position by simply just, if your hands are on the club like this, and then as you then put your right hand, trying to even get it lower on the grip straight yeah, away, absolutely. what are you gonna do? You're gonna push that course, lead hand course. down into position. The right hand's gonna fit on. Now all of a sudden I feel like this is pushing down here. That right hand in position, then if I pivot the chest and move the body, now we can see that the hands are in front of the chest. Then as we move back down, they're gonna get into a much better position. So it almost just encourages a good amount of hinge and load on the shaft earlier on. Absolutely. Right? So if I'm a player that's getting the handle dragging back like this and I'm really struggling to get it in, what would be the sequence that you would then work on after you've introduced this drill? So you go, okay, we're gonna get the hinge here, we're gonna set it, 
then we're probably going to make a few reps going back and forth. You wouldn't really get them hitting the ball with a split grip drill, would you? No, not really. I, I think, again, because the hands are separated and the right, the right hand is so low down the club compared to the left, mm. it, you know, how to control low point then would be awful. You know, you'd, you'd hit some awful shots. So, yeah, it, it'd, be really, it'd be really difficult. Hit it. Yeah, so, so the, the drill itself, yeah. obviously, is to try and create a feeling, isn't it? Yeah. So, you know, any, any drill anyone would give to somebody is to try and create a feeling for that player yeah. to achieve the, the movement that's yeah. been trying to create it, isn't it? Um, you know, and, and again, it needs to then, you need to bottle up that feeling and then try and get that same sensation as you're hitting a shot, mm. holding it conventional. Yeah, so I would say just if you are a player and you do film your swing, you get back into this position, you see that this is in too much of a straight line structure. General, as a reference, we would like to see about the hand, yeah, probably about this absolutely, distance yeah, outside somewhere near that the right thigh. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Uh, by the time that you're in this backswing position, that would mean that you've kind of pushed down on the handle yep. with the left hand, the right hand hinges back, sets the club nicely. Then that would set the tone for the hinge and load of the shaft throughout the swing. So just by doing a few small reps, hinging both hands in front, pivot the body back. Let's do that again. Set up, hinging. I can really feel that kind of pressure pushing down on the shaft turn the chest that looks yep. great good now let's just hit one down there and even just that small swing i was just so aware of that hinging motion feeling that the push of the left hand was allowing that right hand to bend back yeah got me into a really nice structured position by that stage of the swing and then as you can see low point gets forward nice amount of compression yeah. awesome good job cheers buddy nice.